Hi, Keith here with another statistical video. For this video, I thought I'd look at the process of actually testing hypotheses by randomization or permutation. And to make it simple, I'm going to work with just two groups. And here I'm in my usual simulated environment, and one group will be the impact samples which you can see here, and the other will be the control samples off to the side. For people who haven't watched other videos, this is a map of a simulated environment which slopes from about 25 meters deep to 75 north to south, has finer sediment particles as we get towards the south, and these oil platforms here are leaking oil at the drill head which is becoming incorporated in the sediments and potentially affecting the biota. Now today I'm not going to work with the biota at all. I'm just going to work with the environmental variables and one in particular, hydrocarbons. So over here I've got the data that I'll be working with. X and Y are the coordinates where the samples are taken. Group is one for the control and two for the impact locations and then you can see the depths here they're all fairly similar sediment particle size and nutrients all of those are fairly similar because these samples are all taken in pretty much the same depth and then lastly the variable interested in which is hydrocarbons now in this Excel workbook I also have a page here with the data formatted as required for primer. Now strictly speaking I don't need the X and Y columns but I do need a blank column here and I do need to have the factor defined in a column to the right of the data. Okay, um, the thing I'm going to use that I haven't used before is the package Excel statistics or Excel stats and this is written by a uh, lecturer from Deakin University who created this set of Excel workbooks which do common statistical analyses. Um, it's available freely from his site for educational use and I'll put up the link a little bit later on. Now the terminology he uses is a little bit unusual here although it does make sense. The way to operate is to select the data that I want to work with and then go up and pick the particular option which here is one num one cat because I have a categorical variable which is the group or treatment and I have a numerical variable which is hydrocarbon. So I'll hit that. Now the Excel page has opened on the data and description tab. It's showing some errors in here because I've got to get the right variable selected. So the numerical variable I'm interested in is hydrocarbon, that's the end there, and the categorical is group. And now that's looking a bit better. Now this page or this tab just has descriptions. What I'm interested in is test two categories over here. And here we've got summaries of the data, uh, the, average, the difference between the means, the standard error of the difference, and over here the p-value for the t-test. And the t-test here is, being, is the one that is referred to as Welsh's t-test, which does not assume equal standard deviations. If I check that box there, it will, and the p-value will become a little bit smaller and you'll see the degrees, degrees of freedom change. Now I've copied that onto a text page so we can look at that later but you can see it's 0 0.008 considerably lower than 0 0.05 so we would say there is a significant difference between those two. Now one con concern we might have is actually about the distribution of the data. A t-test assumes that the data are normally distributed with equal variances. Now, 
hopping over to past where I've put this data in and let me select down here the hydrocarbons go to plot and histogram make it a little bit bigger fit the normal distribution and let's have a few more bins here it doesn't look very normally distributed to me and in fact the distribution we're seeing here is more like a log normal distribution and that is quite common for pollutants because we'll get some samples with very high concentrations which are falling close to the source of pollution and most of the samples which are further away will have lower values. Now parametric statistics are robust with respect to the normality assumptions so I'd be happy running the t-test or using the analysis of variance but other people might not be and in those cases we can do a permutation test and PAST has that so up here on statistics F and T tests um, the results are here I'll come back to those you see I've had to copy them into two separate columns and select those columns to run the test here so again we get summary information up there confidence intervals and here the T value the unequal T value and the P value here 0 0.007 the same as the result we got from Excel stats and we'd hope that would be the case but what we also have here is a permutation test and I've got it to run um, 99,999 permutations and that gives us a p-value of 1 e to the minus 0 0.5 so another 0 0.00001 or actually less than that. An alternate way of doing this would be as a one-factor anima in primer. So here I've got the data loaded into Primer. I've created, calculated the resemblance matrix using Euclidean distances. I haven't done any transform here because I'm not going to assume normality. The design for this permanent design is very simple. It just has a single factor of group. And so if I run it permanent over permanent over, use design one main test, and here the permutation method will be unrestricted permutation of raw data and if you try to use the default here it will suggest that you use unrestricted go and here we come in and we get a p-value 0.002 so quite a small p-value with primer and an analysis of variance there's the f 13.787 I'll come back to that in a moment when I put up the results from the different packages. Okay, back here in Excel stats, note that there's a button here for the randomized two group test. So let's hit that and see what happens. Now, here's the raw data, and if I pause it, you'll see that it's shuffling these values randomly into two columns over here. So 3.1 is coming from this control grouping the 14 is coming from the impact location and so it's repeatedly doing that over and over again and every time it does it it calculates the difference between the two groups and compares that difference to the original observed difference so the observed difference here is 24.875 if you're looking at the numbers of flish flashing up here you'll see that the randomized difference is always coming out in this case smaller than the observed distance so the p-value as far as we're concerned so far is zero now in fact it's not zero it's less than some small number and that will depend on how many of these randomizations we run so let's stop there so here I've copied the results from Excel stats PAST and Permanova and also you can see the link there to the place where you can get the Excel stats workbooks from so from Excel stats using the Welch's version of the t-test for unequal 
variances, we get 0 0.007. Uh, using PAST, we get effectively the same result for the same test. And for the permutation test, it's effectively less than 0 0.0001. And from the permanova, the ANOVA, we get again much the same sort of result 0 0.003. So they're all indicating strongly that we should reject the null hypothesis. Um, the permutation is just done by shuffling the data. Now, with more complicated analysis of variance designs, the permanover modules will have to shuffle the data in more complicated ways in order to retain the important structure that's present. Now before leaving this topic and finishing this video, I thought I'd just show you one thing to do with the relationship between analysis and variance and t-tests, and that is this. The t-value there is 3. Point 7131 and if I square that value I get 13 point oops I've got when it come back 13.787 which you will see is also the F value. So a analysis of variance on just two groups is in calculation terms and in interpretation terms equivalent to a two-sample t-test.